thought it was a uh, very energetic, uh, really enthusiastic practice, and, and really and truly for the first night, uh, you know, was, was pretty sharp, you know, for the most part. Really impressed with our young guys, uh, meaning our freshman class. Uh, some guys really showed some, you know, uh, showed some impressive, impressive athleticism, I thought, uh, across the board. Uh, of course, you know, with, without pads on, you know, it's really somewhat of an unrealistic picture. But uh, again, just really uh, impressed with their effort and their focus. And uh, so it was a good first day all the way around. We just uh, obviously got to get better every day. And but uh, really pleased with the first first practice. Just this kind of, I mean, another first day. Talk about what you saw, see out of quarterbacks and the kind of a leadership role in that first day. You know, all three of them did some nice things today, and uh, you know, I think you know they're confident. You know, they've been in the system you know long enough now to you know uh, kind of have that uh, you know have that confidence level a little bit you know built up a little bit more than you know past years. Obviously, going into this for three years now, and, uh, but they all three did did some nice things. Uh, obviously, we got a lot of corrections to make, but overall, I thought it was a, a good overall day for our quarterbacks. Yeah, how valuable is it to be for these guys to be in the third, in the same same system, same coaches, doing the same things for the for the third consecutive year? Phil, for me uh, personally, uh, philosophically, uh, I just think it's huge. You know, I think it's really important that the guys um, are continuing to hear the same things year in and year out, and um, you know, I just feel really, really blessed and lucky to have you know virtually the same staff. Uh, going on three years now, that's hard to do, especially in this league with, with so many guys going after your coaches. Uh, but it's huge for the kids to walk into the same meeting room with the same coaches, hearing the same thing year in and year out. So I think it makes a big difference. Anybody uh, limited, going to be limited any uh, physically here early on? No, you know, tonight went, went smooth, uh, didn't have any casualties. And, uh, you know, we'll have our soreness and all the things that go with the first day. But really and truly, it was, uh, it went pretty smooth. So Gene, what do you have to accomplish first week of practice? Mark, we've got so many places on our team, offensively, defensively, you know, ironically, the place where we have the most experience is special teams. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's where, you know, uh, a lot of our team that, is returning from last year. That's that's where a lot of the that's where most of them contributed to. So, offensively and defensively, you know, we've got so many vacancies at positions and so many wide open positions. Uh, you know, we're just looking every day to close the gap and narrow in. You know, who the starters are going to be, who the t two deep is going to be. I mean, there, there's many cases we don't have a two deep. So the first week is really all working towards trying to determine, you know, who our top two guys are. You know, it's not just top one. You've got so many freshmen that are going to be playing. I mean, that's that. There's there's no way around that. You know, our scholarship, you know, count right now is low, low, low 70s. So, if you do the math, a bunch of them are going to be playing. So, uh, which is no problem. You know, we're going to play the ones that obviously we think have a chance to give us the best chance to win. But. That's what we're trying to do this week. By the end of this week, we want to say, look, how far are we in trying to figure out or trying to solve the problem of our 2D? Yeah, after you were on ESPN today, uh, Tom Lugan Bill made the statement that it would be a monumental accomplishment if y'all went 6-6. Six and six. Does, does, does that trouble you at all to hear that kind of talk, or do, does it maybe take some pressure off when you like hearing that kind of talk? Philip, if, if I'm not mistaking, this time last year, nobody used Auburn in championship in the same sense. So that's what makes college football great, as I said today. Uh, everybody's got opinions, and, you know, everybody loves this time of the year to predict who's going to do what. So that's all good. Uh, it's just I don't have the time or the energy to worry about it. Do you all have clippings or any kind of sound around the locker room, the weight room, that kind of people doubting? Any kind of articles, anything that posts it up to motivation? No. No. Do you no. talk about the, the decision of East Penn's micing your quarterbacks as part of the series? How about your decision to kind of let them do that and add pressure with kids? Uh, you know, uh, as far as the, the decision to do it, um, 
I just thought it would be good for people on a national level to get some insight into Auburn football. And, you know, I think it's really good for, you know, our recruits, you know, to watch the show and, and say, wow, this is, you know, this is how, this is how it works, you know, at, at this level. So uh, I thought it was a great opportunity uh, to, again, um, just kind of get some, get some exposure out there for us and how we do things at Auburn because we're very proud about how we do things at Auburn. Um, you know, as far as the pressure on the quarterbacks, you know, uh, as we've talked several times since camp started, uh, they got enough pressure on themselves. I don't think any of the outside external pressures really are going to uh, really play a, play a role because they're all very competitive and, and, and they put a, you know, when you got that type of, you know, that many competitive guys vying for one position, they, they put all that pressure, you know, they put pressure on themselves. So I don't think the outside external pressures really are going to play a factor with these guys. Gene, so, on the roster y'all released today, 51% of the players were freshmen. Did you have to make, is this an unusually large amount of invited walk-ons or walk-ons coming in? And, and did you all have to kind of make a special effort to to find some talented invited walk-ons to bring in to fill out the numbers. Well, you know, we, we really feel good about, you know, the direction of our program in terms of our walk-ons because we've had a lot of success with guys that have contributed. Um, we are at a place right now where, give or take, and don't quote me on it, but it's, we're somewhere around 72 scholarships, and there's a bunch of folks out there at 85. So the rest of our roster, you know, in our 105 that you get to bring in in camp, do the math. That's a lot of guys that are out here playing because they love Auburn, they love football, or they love both. And um, so we take a lot of pride in that. And we've, over the course of the time that I've been here, we've put on, uh, again, over 10 walk-ons on scholarship in two years. And this year, we're going to put a bunch more on because they deserve it. And, you know, so, you know, our message out there is we want you to come here and, and play for Auburn. And you'll have opportunities to, you know, to win scholarships and tell your, tell your children and grandchildren that's what you accomplished. So that's a big part of what we do. And again, if you just do the math, it's 72 scholarships and you've got 105 here. That's a lot of walk-ons. But we have to be able to recruit and, and talk to these walk-ons and convince them that this is a great opportunity for them. And that's what our coaches have done. Given the numbers, how important was it to get the entire freshman <coughs> class in academically on time? Well, you know, uh, again, I, this is two years in a row where everybody has made it. You know, we've recruited two classes back to back now. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, every kid in both signing classes is academically qualified. That's a huge statement in the direction of the type of young guys we're bringing in. And uh, it was very important that, you know, that all of them made it. And, you know, again, uh, not only is it, you know, a, a talented class, uh, but it's, you know, it's the right guys. And so we feel good about that. Coach, first day uh, on the uh, newly reconfigured fields, and Clint was talking about the walking, uh, the walk through last night. Just to, your thoughts on the new indoor facility and the new fields. The indoor facility is incredible. And uh, it just brings, it gives us so much flexibility. Uh, in so many ways, uh, just with preparing, you know, whether it's walkthroughs, whether it's you know, uh, inclement weather, uh, whatever it is, uh, it's just <clears throat> it's a state of the art, um, just an amazing, you know, facility, and you know, it's going to help us a lot. And so, kids are excited about it. You know, it's we can practice outdoors, we can practice indoors, whatever we need to do. Uh, but, you know, it'll take a little to get used to with kind of the new configurations of the fields, but I really like how it was designed and really like, you know, uh, at least the first night how it, you know, how it unfolded. With the temperatures uh, the way they've been, are you going to use this for, the, for uh, some of the afternoon practices? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll get a lot of use out of this indoor. Take a few more. As, as early as it is, can you tell a little bit of a difference in you guys just for this conditioning or focus? Because they know they got a shot. You know, field. They're not thinking red shirt. Did you, can you see that well, in the reports? And you know, one thing we talked about with our young guys, we talked about it all summer with, you know, guys individually, uh, and we talked about it last night, and we, we hit it again today. We did not recruit our freshmen to watch. We did, we did not recruit them to come in here and watch. We did not recruit them to come in here and observe everybody else play. 
We recruited them to come in and play. We told them that when we recruited them, and here they are. So I, I think it's understood, not just from the recruiting process, but now that they're here and they've been around it and, and they see, you know, what numbers are and who, who's at their positions that they got to beat out, they understand, wow, this is real. I've got a chance to play here now. And that is our expectation. Not one of them are we saying, look, we're gonna, you're redshirted till you prove you can play. It's the opposite. You can play until we just feel like there's no way and then we redshirt you. And that, that's, that's how we see it. And that's how we have to see it right now with, with the numbers and where they are. Gene, you've said before that because of the young guys that you've had a lot more fun coaching with these guys because they got to get coaches from high school. To, can you talk a little bit more just about maybe your staff and, and you guys? Have you guys talked individually as a staff saying, we've got to show them as coaches as well? Absolutely. You know, as far as our staff goes, I mean, you know, we're not using any excuses for anything. You know, uh, all that's a myth. Uh, we got to coach these young guys up, and if they become the guys that we got to play with, and I've said it before, if we play with 15 or 20 or whatever true freshmen out there, that's what we play with. So there's no excuses about anything. We have to get them ready to play. We have to do the best coaching job we've done since we've been here. And, you know, that's, that's what our expectation is because our expectation and our standard will never change here, and that is the one championship. So um, we got to coach them that way. All right, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate guys. it.